Hello again, and let's start to take our first steps into actually creating now a real WinJS application. The first step we're going to do is go back into the package manifest, and we're going to switch back to default HTML, which gives us all of the infrastructure that we need to leverage WinJS. And we talked a little bit about this in the earlier screencast, but let's just revisit it very quickly. If we look at default.html, you can see that what happens is, is a couple different WinJS script libraries get loaded. So we're loading kind of the basic core part of the infrastructure, which would be things like the application model and data binding and all these other things. And then we load up uh, the components, uh, the script components that are needed to do the UI controls, which we'll see in more detail in future screencasts. And then we run uh, default JS, which is where we would start to add our own code. And then there's also Navigator JS, which is the, the script that's used to, to help with the navigation model. Remember that what we started this project as was really kind of this single HTML page navigation model, which means that really everything gets contained within default HTML. We just navigate between chunks of HTML. So if we look here, you can see here's the div, and this is really the only content in default HTML that is a WinJS control called a page control navigator. And what it does is just loads different HTML pages, kind of like a frame, into this environment. And so here you can see that we say, okay, the, the home page that we're gonna start with is home.html. And if we look at home.html, we can see that it's got, you know, welcome this tweet scan. It's gonna go ahead and also make sure that it can leverage WinJS uh, infrastructure if needed. Um, and then you know run whatever script that you may have. And so if we run this application real quickly, we can see here's home page HTML actually being displayed inside of default page uh, HTML. So pretty straightforward. Now let's break down what's actually going on. Let's dive into the script a little bit more. So if we look at default.js, and I've already gone ahead and marked up uh, some additional code in here that we'll look at to give you an idea of kind of the, the flow, the process. If you're coming from the web world, um, you're used to, you know, worrying about when, you know, when is the window on load event fired and, and when is the DOM content loaded, you know, um, event fired and how do those relate and where do I put code and blah, blah, blah. So if you look here in default date JS, we just got this self, you know, self calling function here. And what I've done is I'm just going to log things out to the console. So we'll see when this particular uh, script function runs. And then you can see we set up the actual application object for WinJS. We set up the navigation environment and some stuff to kind of be able to determine what sort of activation. We'll look at that more in future screencasts as well. I've then gone ahead and loaded up or wired up the window.onload event and just said, you know, let me know when we've loaded. Go ahead and let's listen to see when the DOM content is loaded. And then what WinJS gives us as part of this application object is a series of um, other events that are, are specific to the WinJS framework. And so you can see, for example, here on the app object, I'm listening to the activated event, um, and, and then I can do whatever I need to do. Now, what happens in a WinJS application is we take a look and see, well, wh why are we launching? What is our activation kind? What made us start? And launch means that someone clicked on um, the, the start tile from the home page. I can also get, for example, here, I could be told instead that I'm being launched as the result of a search operation. And again, we'll look at these different uh, scenarios um, in the future. But for the simple uh, stuff that we're doing right now, we're just going to be launched by someone you know, tapping the tile on the start page. So we're going to see if we've launched you know, because of a launch. What, um, what was I doing the last time I ran? Right, My previous execution state, was I terminated? Was there some other, was I suspended? Was there some other reason that I closed? I may be interested in that and it'll dictate how I restore my application. And then we come down in here and at the end of the day, we just kind of check to see, you know, do we have a location that we need to navigate to? If we do, then let's go ahead and navigate to that location in our case, homepage.html, I can pass state along with that as well um, if I would like to do that. But there's other events on the app object as well. I can see when the application is kind of loaded. It's not activated yet, but it's been loaded. I can also see once everything is done, you know, is the app ready or not? There's also this checkpoint which fires periodically to let me know that, hey, you're being suspended or a certain amount of time has passed. Maybe you should save some state just in case. So those are some events. So I haven't put a, a log function in there just because we, we don't want to wait for it to fire. Um, if we look at home uh, page.js or home.js, you can see here again, I've got a self-calling function and inside of this, I'm just going to spit out when that function's being called. And then we define a page. 
And the page itself has a set of events that are defined by the WinJS application framework, or in this case, actually the UI portion of the framework. And I can really focus on three main events. Now, initially, if you were to just look at this you know, page before I modified it, all you really had was the ready event. And this basically tells me, okay, the page has been lo loaded, um, the, the controls are ready, what would you like to do? But if I want to be able to tie in before the controls are wired up or before any of the other kind of infrastructure around WinJS has been processed, there's an init, um, and then once everything is all done, I can do this process. So I'm going to go ahead and run this app. And then once it's all fired up, we're going to go ahead and switch back into the IDE. And if you look here, this is the order. Um, that you can see uh, these events fire. So you can see that here's the function, the default JS self-calling function. Then the application gets loaded. So that's the WinJS app framework being loaded. Then the DOM content gets loaded. The app is then activated. The window gets loaded. The home function is called because we're loading in home page um, or the home.html page. WinJS fires its events for the page object, so init, processed, and ready. Um, I guess I got those orders uh, mixed up when I talked about it there earlier. So ready is when I'm all done. Init is before anything starts, processed, um, and then ready. You'll notice in the docs, just one little by the by, that the docs say that the app loaded event comes after the DOM content loaded um, event. And um, in all of the times that I've ever done this, I've never seen that actually happen, at least as far as you know the, the little samples that I've done. So I don't know if it's just a timing issue and the way stuff is being put out and I've just been fortunate to have it always fire the same way, or if it's something different. But that's the basic structure in general where you're gonna be wiring in code will be you know, somewhere in the function, somewhere in the app activated, somewhere in the home function, or somewhere in the win page ready, and maybe an app ready as well, depending on what you need to do. So that's a quick look at kind of the life cycle of, of pages being loaded into a WinJS app. When we come back next time, I promise, we'll actually start to write some code and build a, a, a basic scaffold of an application.